You ever hear of one of those ships that kind of just takes over a whole fan base overnight? Like one moment you're looking at some stupid meme on your timeline or for you page and suddenly you're met with this barrage of fan art, fanfics, edits, threads, analyses, general screaming. All for this pairing that seemingly materialized overnight and completely blindsided you. Well, in addition to that, picture said ship landing itself a spot not just as one of the top 10 ships in that fandom, but also one of the top ships in fandom with a capital F period. Hold on to your volleyballs, everybody. We're talking about Sakuatsu. <laughs> God, I love Haikyuu, and I also love Sakuatsu. I quite frankly could talk about them all day for a whole video, which is basically what I'm gonna do. <laughs> if you're a Haikyuu fan watching this, I'm sure you've seen this menace of a ship or at least have heard of it. Maybe you're an avid shipper of it yourself, in which case, welcome, welcome. I honestly feel a little bad for the anime only who are just starting out with Haikyuu and keep getting jump scared by these two. Like, who are you people? Why are you two shipped together? But hey, you wanna know a secret? I'm telling you now, even if you decide to pick up the manga, if solely to understand where Saku Atsu comes from, Spoilers, you're not gonna find much. This ship is pretty much all the fandom's doing. Plot twist, I know. If you want to spare yourself some time, just dig around a bit online for some context, or better yet, just stick around and I'll explain it all for you myself. And for those of you who aren't Haikyuu fans, but are here anyway, maybe it's because you've heard of the ship in passing and are morbidly curious, perhaps you have a friend or online acquaintance who won't shut up about them, or maybe you're just bored and want to absorb some obscure Haikyuu ship knowledge. I hope you enjoy the tale of two jerk characters so unlikable that they could only be shipped Aww. with each other. But before we dive into Saku Atsu, I'm gonna dig into some snacks courtesy of today's sponsor. Thank you very much to Sakuriko and Tokyo Treat for sponsoring this video. Sakuriko and Tokyo Treat are monthly Japanese snack subscription boxes that offer a huge variety of different goodies for you to munch on, as well as a way to enjoy Japanese culture from your own home. If you're interested in more traditional, authentic, artisan Japanese snacks, then Sakurako is the perfect box for you. Each box will include specialty teas and one piece of special Japanese tableware. September's box comes with this gorgeous zucchini plate featuring Kyoto's famous Yasaka Pagoda backlit with moonlight. If you want the latest, most exclusive, limited edition snacks, then Tokyo Treat would suit you best. With seasonal snacks, an instant ramen bowl, and a drink in every box. Booklets are also included with Sakuriko and Tokyo Treat that go over all the different snacks so you can find out what you'd like to try first and what would suit your taste best. The boxes also have different monthly themes to highlight quality Japanese foods as the seasons and holidays go by. Both boxes for September feature themes to celebrate the Moon Festival. I know it as the Mid-Autumn Moon Festival. Sakuriko's Kyoto Moon Festival box is jam-packed with all sorts of sweets. Specialized Kyoto hard candy. These are definitely some of the prettiest hard candies I've ever seen. Like this one is shiso leaf flavored. I've never Ever tried anything shiso leaf flavored outside of like shiso leaf? Soba boro, Kyoto hojicha latte pudding, delicious soy sauce glazed rice crackers, this amazing yuzu doriyaki. Mm, that's actually crazy. The filling is like if it were red bean but yuzu flavored. As well as these retro animal yochi cookies. These remind me of those circus animal cookies but they're not as sweet which is nice. I want a pink one. They kind of look like animals too. <laughs> Tokyo Treats Moon Festival Munchies also has some amazing standout snacks. There are these adorable Hello Kitty Star Milk Bread Bites, Salt Lemon Kit Kat, Texas Corn Pizza Puffs, Ume Soda, Hello. This is gonna be my companion for the rest of the video. And Mikan Mochi, which was probably my favorite. You just made me so happy. It's like Mochi and Clementine Gushers had a baby. That or the mannequin strawberry waffle. This smells incredible. I feel like I'm gonna have my world blown right now. <laughs> Are you kidding me? What the actual hell? I don't know how they did it. It did taste like you're biting into a fresh strawberry. Like the waffle is soaked in this fresh strawberry flavor. I witchcraft. Use my code Coley for $5 off your first Sakurako or Tokyo Treat box through my links in the description. I absolutely love receiving my Sakurako and Tokyo Treat boxes each month. It's such a treat seeing what's going to be inside, what the month's theme's going to be. And as a huge foodie, I am never disappointed. So if you're feeling curious, adventurous, and are down to give Sakurako and or Tokyo Treat a try, then go for it. Thank you very much Sakurako and Tokyo Treat for continuing to sponsor me. Let's dive into the video. <laughs> I wanted to wear my Atachiyama jacket for this video, but 
it's hot. But I do have this adorable Atsumu plush, a Tsumsum Sumu, if you will. So he'll just be chilling with me as I talk about his big ship. Saku Atsu is the pairing between Sakusa Kiyomi and Mia Atsumu, side characters from the popular series Haikyuu, which focuses on the highs and lows of high school volleyball. Both our characters are protagonist Hinata meets during his volleyball journey. In high school, Sakusa plays for Itachiyama Institute and is one of the top three wing spiker aces in the country, while Atsumu plays for Inarizaki High and is recognized as the top setter in Japan's high school volleyball circuit. For a time, they serve as almost these legendary players from big powerhouse schools who kind of loom over Karasuno, Hinata's team, as big upcoming baddies. Their first appearance is when Kageyama, Hinata's teammate slash rival slash Bestie attends the All Japan Intensive Youth Training Camp, which they were also invited to. Since these guys aren't main characters involved in like every step of the story, I can avoid big spoilers for the most part, but I am about to go into events that occur after the Nationals arc that do involve other characters. So if you'd rather avoid spoilers, then feel free to go to the following timestamp so you can get the context of the ship without having to get the whole shebang of everything else. After Karasuno loses Nationals, a time skip occurs and we follow our human tangerine post high school graduation as he he spends time in Brazil, playing beach volleyball, getting chummy with an old nemesis, Oikawa, and then we fast forward again a bit more to after he's returned to Japan and has joined a professional volleyball league team called the Misby Black Jackals. He is revealed to be teammates with former teacher slash bird menace Bokoto, as well as Sakusa and Atsumu. We get some moments of them all interacting as a team while they play their big match against the Schweiden Adlers, a team consisting of big longtime rivals Ushijima, Kageyama, and Hoshimi. Later on, Sakusa and Atsumu and up on Japan's Olympic volleyball team alongside Bokuto, Hinata, Kageyama. It's a great moment seeing how far everyone's come and how they've influenced each other's lives in volleyball, both in the big leagues and outside it. TLDR, Sakusa Kiyomi, and Mia Atsumu end up on the same professional volleyball team, the Misby Black Jackals, and are also part of Japan's Olympic volleyball team down the line. Sakusa. This b his given name is Kiyomi, but he's always been just Sakusa or Omi in my mind. It feels weird to call him otherwise. Which is funny because Mia Atsumu has always been just Atsumu. Maybe it's because he has a twin brother, so calling him Mia would get confusing. I guess. Anyway, Saksa is best described as brutally honest, prickly, reserved, and meticulous. He's literally referred to as the too blunt jerk in canon and has a definitive, proud, competitive side to him, which comes with the territory of being one of the top volleyball players in Japan. He's confirmed to have minor misophobia and dislikes crowds, germs, bugs, anything that could be considered dirty, it's absolutely not his thing. They disgust him. And more often than not, he's shown his health conscious side with things like reminding his teammates to get their flu shots, lamenting people not washing their hands, and wearing a mask whenever he's not playing volleyball. A king truly ahead of his time, we have no choice but to stand. He's the type to always finish what he starts and will throw himself fully into any task or anyone he deems worthy of his time. And yeah, again, really not much of a filter with this guy. He will say whatever is on his mind. If he doesn't like something, he'll be sure to let you know in the most to the point way possible, politeness be damned. But aside from the kind of grumpy first impression he gives off, he actually has a pretty good sense of humor and a playful side to him that comes out whenever he banters with his teammates or friends. And with the future teammates he has, you gotta have some degree of silliness if you wanna survive in that group. Atsumu, this b one of the infamous Mia twins. On the outside, he has an easygoing appearance, comes off as cheeky, self-assured, is always sporting a lazy grin. Due to his good looks and charm, he practically gets the idle treatment whenever he plays at games. However, once you get past that surface facade, this guy is a little sh It's honestly a little hard trying to properly describe his personality other than Rotten. He is nicknamed the Big Fat Jerk in canon, quite fitting if I do say so myself. And I say it lovingly because I adore this mother <laughs> On more than one occasion, he said that anyone who can't hit my tosses are nothing but scrubs. Which, my guy, there are better ways to say you gotta get your head in the game. He, and I quote, never returns things he borrows, he lies, his brother calls him a tyrannical abusive pig when he goes too far with his insults, and is later stated to have his mental age drop by five years when he's in the middle of a game. He excels at riling up his opponents, is great at giving condescending comments, sorry, compliments. He's extremely competitive, has incredibly high expectations for his teammates, and is very particular when it comes to serving for his focus to be just right. But as bad as his attitude can be, it's undeniable that his passion for volleyball runs deep. He's shown to have this insatiable hunger to keep getting better and better, and he doesn't give a f 
about what others think of them, even if they hate him. At the end of the day, he really loves his twin brother, is incredibly dedicated to his role as a setter, and has a goofy side which comes out whenever people he's close to clown on him. So I've been following the Haikyuu manga since, like, late 2015. Haikyuu in general has a really special place in my heart. It means a lot to me, and dare I say, it's almost a comfort media. It's not really an exaggeration when I say I really don't know where I'd be without this silly, hard-hitting, life-lesson-giving volleyball story. And since I've been around for a while, I actually was present when Saku Atsu was still in its early days. I got on board the hype train and, like, May of 2020. Not gonna lie, there is a little pride in me that's like, hell yeah, I'm part of the OG Saku Atsu gang! Which is why it's always kind of funny looking back on Saku Atsu's origins in hindsight, cause, uh... Ooh. Yeah, this ship started off as a rare pair. The talk surrounding the pairing started off as a joke and began circulating in Haikyuu rare pair Twitter circles in February and March of 2020, shortly after the manga crumbs of them interacting in Misby came out. That's when people started thinking, hey wait, that's a viable ship right there. Sakuatsu do have some history together, albeit only mentioned in passing. Their teams played against each other in the inner high finals the year before Karasuno made it to nationals, in which Itachiyama, Sakusa's team, won against Inarizaki, Atsumu's team breaking down all of their canon moments together. The first time we as the audience saw them interact was on July 16th, 2016, at the training camp where Sakusa spikes a ball Atsumu receives. They're both on the cover of Volume 28, and there's a crumb of them together in Let's Haikyuu Chapter 166. And then we fast forward a few years to January 4th, 2020, with Chapter 379. The bomb that both Sakusa and Atsumu are Hinata's teammates on the Misby Black Jackals is dropped. Atsumu is being a drama queen about seeing so many old rivals crowding outside the bathroom before the big match, and Sakusa is like, What are you talking about? Typical Sakusa. And then, Atsumu called Sakusa Omi, Omi-kun, which is a rip on his name, Kyomi, and in the same breath goes, Do you always have to be so prickly about everything? What are you, a sea urchin? Do you hear that? That is the sound of a ship setting sail. Two characters having a little tiff, causing their ship to get a lot of attention. Wow, never seen that before, I assure you. In chapter 379, Sakusa stops Atsumu and Hinata from pulling a bokoto and playing it up to the crowd. He also reacts with disgust when Atsumu is huffing mad copium when Hinata tells him that Kageyama beat him in the setter ranks. What's even better is that in the very next chapter, another professional volleyball team, EJP, consisting of some of Miss B's old teammates from high school, are all talking smack about the boys and are like, I hope Sakusa's okay. With his type of personality, it's easy to get the wrong impression about him. And Komori, Sakusa's cousin, is like, I mean, the impression isn't that far from reality. Ow, gotta love family. And Atsumu's old teammate, Suna, goes, Atsumu's a big fat jerk, he deserves it, it's fine. And Bokuto's buddy, Washio, follows up with, Somehow having a big fat jerk and a too blunt jerk on the same team doesn't strike me as fine. Sakuatsu awful personality is apparently confirmed. Chapter 382 was when Sakusa's secret superpower of having extra bendy wrists was revealed, in which Atsumu said a ball to him and called his line shot gross. Sakusa didn't take the compliment, very well. And then Omi-kun gets upgraded to Omi-Omi in the next chapter where the two are seen competing for who could get the first service ace of the day. Next chapter, Sakusa does a little in-your-face wiggle to Atsumu when he gets a service ace. Absolutely iconic Omi. In Haikyuu Buu chapter 38, Sakusa begs Atsumu along with Hoshimi to help him get rid of bugs in his room. Atsumu insults him, Sakusa insults him back, and they don't get much done. Chapter 390 has Atsumu being a drama queen yet again. When he lets his serve get away from him, lamenting how he got carried away, and Sakusa, always supportive, is like, you're always like this though. In chapter 394, Atsumu is seen smiling as Sakusa digs. Chapter 396, Atsumu sets to Sakusa. Chapter 399, the two are having a rough moment in the match. Kuro makes an appearance in chapter 401. Atsumu takes one look at him and goes, yeah, that guy's vibes are atrocious. To which Sakusa nods in agreement. This is a lot of Saku Atsu shipper's favorite panel, and not gonna lie, it is pretty cute. Why is Sakusa just nodding? So cute. Chapter 402 is when they're at the Olympics. We see them on exact opposite sides from one another. Sakusa digs Oikawa's serve, and Atsumu's looking pleased off to the side. They're on a volume cover together again for volume 44, depicting Ms. B, which was released on July 21st, 2020. And that's it for manga appearances. August 2020 brought lots of official sketches to the table, though. In a commemorative sketch for volume 44, Atsumu is munching next to Sakusa, who is sus about eating food prepared by someone else. Another sketch has Omi sussing out Atsumu's POV of their youth training camp experience, to which Atsumu is a little 
The two do the Misby Black Jackals pose with the rest of the team. Atsumu is having a good old time and Sakusa is having a time. Later on, November 4th, 2020, we got the pair playing beach volleyball. And then in the Haikyuu light novel, Haikyuu Shosetsuban, volume 13, before Sakusa has an interview, he expresses he doesn't want to touch his fan gifts. And Atsumu bursts in and teases him, putting a firm grip on his shoulders as he does so. It's not until Atsumu starts trying to hand him the gifts that he gets freaked out and leaves. Not caring, he just fled from his own interview. This was all the shippers needed to run with the idea that Atsumu is able to get close to Sakusa and around his whole no touching rule. A couple more breadcrumbs sprinkled here and there. Atsumu teased Sakusa in a video for not wearing a uniform while he was social distancing. More crumbs came in 2022 from Let's Haikyuu and Haikyuu Boo. They were kept on the same team for the Haikyuu special bonus chapter published on April 25th, 2022. And yeah, for now that's it for official content. Now with all of that being laid out, if you have your shipper goggles on, you might be like, wait, that's actually a lot to work with. But remember, all of the 2020 Ms. B stuff came from one volleyball match spanning like over 20 chapters. And from all those 20 plus chapters, all of the Sakuatsu interactions I listed came out to 13 manga panels. Panels being like little squares on the page. Leading to a grand total of like 20 panels from the whole manga. 20 panels of interaction. And I say interaction very generously because for most of those panels, they're like kind of just standing next to each other in each other's vicinity, maybe exchanged a few words or insulted each other or nodded vigorously. Everything else was basically crumbs from side stories or extras. But for Sakuatsu shippers, it was enough. The power of shipping is an indescribable thing. Initially, it was considered a bit of a crack ship. Sort of, wow, these two characters we thought would never see each other again are actually teammates now, and one of them even gave the other a nickname. Hey, what if they actually got together? Wouldn't that be so funny and out of the blue? <laughs> However, after a bit more memery and jokery was thrown about, all of that quickly turned into... Unless. But although Saku Atsu had its big italicized O moment in 2020 and only grew exponentially going into 2021, there actually were whispers of the ship years prior to that. As early as 2017, there was talk of the two characters having potential together, as little as they had interacted at that point in time. The power of good character aesthetics. These boys are obviously good looking characters, and although manga readers kept to themselves for the most part in terms of upcoming characters due to spoilers, I say mostly because the Mia twins were a hot topic in the fandom the moment their poorly dyed heads made an appearance in the manga, bless their hearts. A combination of the Haikyuu season for anime release, along with the manga time skip events, the pandemic, all came together into this crackpot. <laughs> it is a crackpot. Crackpot is the perfect descriptor for the recipe of basically what allowed Sakuatsu to fully go nuts. Rather than like some other ships that have a slow burn rise to fame through steady contributions from fans over time, I'd say that Sakuatsu is more akin to an errant spark that managed to land on a powder keg next to a fireworks factory. That's a bit of a hyperbole. It did take two and a half years to get to the point where it is now, but it is still really wild seeing a rare pair you got into when there were like barely 300 fixed to its name go from that to hitting five digits on AO3 and becoming one of the top ships in the fandom. It's still a little hard to wrap my head around. Not to mention overtake ships that are and have been popular for a very long time. The big Misby final arc in the Haikyuu manga kicked off the start of 2020, and that was again when we got the big reveal that Sakusa and Atsumu are on the same professional volleyball team together. Within the same month, Haikyuu season four started airing on January 11th, 2020. And when episode three came along on January 25th, with it came Saku Atsu's first official appearance in the anime, animated at last. A couple months prior to this, the Haikyuu stage play Flight featuring the training camp ran from November 1st to December 15th, 2019. And there was some buzz present for the actors with fans complimenting their looks and liking their scenes together. So that's already three different medium Saku Atsu got depicted in in the span of like three months. Not to mention while all of this is going down there was a what do you call it? All right, a panini. The panini also got delivered in January. It's like the universe said, hey, this pandemic sucks. Let me use the pain a bit by giving you brain rot for this random ship you might like. Once the Haikyuu manga ended on July 20th, 2020 and the official storyline came to a close, 
People obviously wanted to keep the story going and had their own visions for post-canon shenanigans, fleshing out characters or side plots they took an interest in, creating AUs and canon divergent fix, speculating about things that could have happened but we as the audience just weren't privy to. And then the anime hiatus happened. The fandom needed content and needed it fast. Anything to push away the despair of having your favorite series that's been a part of your life for years finally end and keep your love of it alive, right? And what better way than an attractive new ship with just enough backing to get the hamster wheel going but with plenty of room to get creative? Word of mouth plus an explosion of social media usage in a time where everyone was at home online and a vacuum was present for more content to fill the void now played huge roles in getting Sakuatsu off the ground. Lots of early Sakuatsu shippers had whole threads dedicated to explaining the ship, analyzing its potential, as well as fic rec lists ready for those who showed any interest in the burgeoning pairing. Many incredible pieces of Saku Atsu fan art were created by insanely talented artists, which drew in crowds of people who were enamored by the pics of these two pretty boys. These were all the starting ingredients for Saku Atsu to start taking root in the fandom. We honest to god don't know much about Sakusa or Atsumu other than some bare bones backstory for each of them, some minor fan family details, a general feel of their personality and what motivates them, and a smattering of moments where they're playing volleyball together. Sakuatsu is essentially a blank canvas, with just enough to give you a general sense of direction to go about navigating their hypothetical relationship, but with enough space to just put your own twist on it. It's like a bucket of Legos, where you have enough pieces to know what you're working with, but no instruction booklet. Let your imagination grow! Dare I say, for many creators out there, they could be treated almost like OCs in terms of what you want to do with them, romantically or otherwise. They're side characters, with not a ton of the main storyline attached to them, and since their futures are both pretty open-ended, there's a lot you could do with that. This is a big contrast to other more well-known ships in the Haikyuu fandom. A lot of the bigger Haikyuu pairings are seen as defaults, ships that have been around since early on in the series when teams and major characters were first being introduced. While there are plenty of rare pairs, crack ships, etc. that float around the fan base, they kind of stick to their own spaces, either because they want to get out of dodge of the big ships with big followings. This is usually the case for smaller ships that involve characters that are in the bigger, more well-known ships and they don't want to find themselves unwittingly in a shipping war, which thankfully I don't see happen very often just because the creators I follow tend to be really chill and have cultivated these really chill followings. But I hear this happens a lot in other bubbles of the fan base, which makes me sad because this didn't happen very often when the fandom was smaller, but what are you gonna do? Or perhaps the characters in these smaller ships are not as popular, and so because of that, the ships are even more obscure. For the mainstream ships like Iwa Oi, Kagehina, Bokuwaka, Sugadai, we have a well-established foundation built off of canon and lots and lots of chapters and time spent together. And so we have a pretty good read of how the relationships tick. Several of the characters in these larger ships also get time to shine in the main storyline with their own character arcs we get to follow. And so we're able to get a lot further in their psyche and know more about them as individuals. Saku Atsu, in comparison, is a very new ship that only started gaining traction once the series was coming to a close, and it only got bigger once it ended. Saku Atsu is also interesting in that it really doesn't have a whole lot of competition from other ships. I really hate saying competition. It's just ship shipping. It's not a game. You don't win anything. Just ship what you like. Anyway, there are other fairly sizable ships involving both of the characters, like Atsuhina and Ushisaku, that do have their own backing. But both of those ships have bigger counterparts with other parties that have been around for longer, Kagehina and Ushiten, for instance. There is Atsukita, the pairing between Atsumu and former Captain Kita Shunsuke, but the lack of competition could be explained with the combination of Kita also being commonly shipped with former teammate Aran, as well as the fact that, though the ship has been around since Inarizaki was introduced in 2017, by the time season 4 was animated, the Misby arc was already underway. Kita didn't get his character story reveal in the anime until November 2020, so a combination of less potential future interactions as well as crowds of people flocking to the quickly growing Sakuatsu ship prevented it from being a rival ship. In the early days of Sakuatsu, there were also people who shipped Sakusa with his teammate Komori, until it was later revealed that the two were cousins, so that snuffed that ship out pretty quick. In an awful sort of metaphor, and I mean this lovingly as someone who absolutely adores the ship, 
Sakawatsu almost feels like this invasive species that spawned from the fandom's collective Delulu behavior and met little to no resistance in its takeover of the local Haiku ecosystem. It was new, it was fresh, it offered up something to spice up the default ship lineup a bit, and it was something in line with the manga that could work with the canon timeline. Canon potential is by no means an indicator of how well a ship will fare in the masses, and we barely have any canon relationship to speak of between these boys. But as the saying goes, give them an inch and they'll take a mile. Evidently, I mean, Saikou Atsu managed to climb the ranks of AO3's top ship stats as a brand new ship entry on the top ships of the year at number 47 in 2020, number 21 in 2021, number 29 in 2022, as well as number 91 in the top 100 ships on AO3 of all time. It went from 724 total fix prior to 2021 what? to currently over 10,000. At the time of filming this, Saku Atsu has hit 10,000 fix on AO3. I am at a loss for words. Watch me giving freaking Iwa Oi a run for its money by the end of the year. Watch me just have jinxed that. Sorry, Iwa Oi, my beloved. This might sound silly, but ever since Atsumu made his debut, I low-key was wondering if I'd ever be super drawn to a ship with him in it. And while I still enjoyed his other ships, and still do, none of them really sucked me in, and I was like, well, that's a shame, he's a cool character. It'd be fun to see how he'd fare in a romantic setting with a dynamic I really like. But as soon as Sakuatsu became a thing in the fandom, it was over for me. It was such a surprise ship that hit me like a truck. I literally have already spent like three hours talking about Sakuatsu and it's dark now. So I went over more of the logistic reasons as to how and why Sakuatsu has become as popular as it has. But going balls to the wall shipper mode, let's go into some of the reasons why so many Haikyuu fans, myself included, have fallen in love with this pairing, their dynamic as a couple, and all of the tropes, both obvious and not so obvious, they fit into. For starters, these guys check off a lot of the opposites attract adjacent dynamics. You have teasing, playful, flirt, X serious and aloof grouch, someone kind of two-faced ex sundere, hot-headed ex cautious, carefree ex brooding. For aesthetics, you've got some contrast between light and dark, a little bit of a height difference. Atsumu is from Hyogo Prefecture, and so he speaks with a Kansai accent, which translates to kind of having a twang or sort of drawl and fix in fan content. So that added laid-back impression also provides a pretty noticeable contrast to Sakusa's more polished, clean, and proper sort of energy. Just the little things that catch your eye. But then you take into account their similarities. I mean, for one, it's already been stated that both of these guys are kind of hats. They're clearly not your standard debonair halo wearing love interests. They've both got a rude streak, albeit mostly unintentional on Omi's part at least. Known as jerks with unpleasant personalities with their own distinct flavor of awfulness. Not to mention the fact that they're both insanely competitive. When these two are put together, you'd think the result would be complete and utter destruction, just too many bad vibes in one room. That or mutually assured destruction on a good day. But going more into their shared positive attributes, both are very, very passionate about volleyball. They strive to be the best at what they do. They both like to live in the moment, and they share a witty, dry sense of humor. Though, I could definitely see Atsumu laughing at, like, I don't know, a fart joke, and then Sakusa staring unimpressed, like, ew, what the f***? I think the best descriptor for this ship would be tragically successful. They could simultaneously bring out the best and worst in each other. About 90% of their conversations already have consisted of bickering, almost vicious teasing, barb jabs, and a surface level apathy. And yet, despite the fact that one half of the ship is prickly and does not like people, and the other half is a condescending fox that likes to get under people's skin, these two could care for each other in their own odd, unconventional ways. It feels like there's this distinct push and pull within their relationship, always pushing each other's boundaries, but nonetheless, always staying on equal footing. I like to say that rather than being a ship built off of a well-established canon foundation, this is a ship that's built off of the potential they could have together. I think many people who ship it were initially drawn to the aesthetic of two very good-looking characters with very outwardly different personalities who were once on opposing teams now being on the same team thrown together. While that is an obvious pull, if we peel back that layer of two opposite dickwads with great sexual tension, then what we have are two clearly imperfect characters who find each other, fall in love, love each other regardless of any personality flaws. Not in spite of them, but learning to let someone in and care for them holistically. Becoming better people in the process? I really don't know if I could say these two make each other better. Like, they become better in some aspects, but 
they'd also really enable each other. <laughs> Honestly, Saku Atsu is the collective fantasy of having two rather unlikely people find their happy ending in each other. It gives the rest of us hope that we'll also find someone who loves us, even if we're not cut to the perfect standard or have a trash personality, damn it. Not to mention that in Haikyuu, many of the big pairings are between setters and spikers. There is something really special with the setter-spiker dynamic. It requires a very high degree of trust in one another. For the setter, it's about having a degree of control that dictates how you conduct the game and everyone playing, but also surrendering that control once the ball is out of your hands. For the spiker, it's believing your setter is giving their all to set you up with a successful spike if you're willing to accept what they give you. Lots of subtext to read into. Two jerks stuck together because no one else would want to be with them so their only option was dating each other is a really funny take on Saku Atsu, but it also gives the relationship a weird sort of authenticity that is honestly hard to find in a lot of pairings. As the majority of ships out there are either looked at through candy-colored glasses or just seen as capital B bad. Relationships in actuality are not so easily split between this relationship is perfect and sweet and happy all the time and this relationship is horribly draining and unbalanced and awful. There will be good moments and highs and joys to be found just like there will be moments of frustration and anger and wondering if it's gonna be okay or worth it. I love me some good old-fashioned sugary sappiness with huge declarations of love just as much as the next hopeless romantic, don't get me wrong. But when I want something just a little more grounded Grounded. Sakuwatsu just hits. Working with the sort of character flaws within this dynamic, it makes the exploration of their relationship that much more interesting as well as that much more touching when they are able to find happiness within each other. Plus, all of the bickering, bantering, teasing, jabs, petty fighting that inevitably occurs is always hilarious to read and yeah, between these two, the spice potential is pretty up there. <laughs> There's lots of common fanon bits and bobs that will usually make an appearance in Sakuatsu fix. Because Sakuatsu only has so much to work with in canon, it's kind of funny but also really fascinating seeing all of these little headcanons becoming Sakuatsu fanon widespread in the community. Usually, Atsumu will stick to calling Sakusa some variation of Omi, whereas Sakusa will stick to calling him Mia. On occasion, I've heard him call Atsumu Tsumu, but that's either when he's feeling very generous, very soft, or very not sober. In canon, Sakusa went to college before diving right into the professional volleyball scene and became collegiate MVP. So a lot of fix will play with the idea that Sakusa's teammates or classmates will not realize that he's dating Atsumu, who's a professional volleyball player at this point. He'll either be keeping his relationship with Atsumu on the down low, or if he does let people know that they're dating, nobody believes him. And so when the truth comes out, everyone is just hilariously shocked. Sakusa has two moles above his eyebrow, and it's a common headcanon that he has several more all over his body. So in fanfic terms, those moles are magnets for kisses. There's often a moment or scene where Atsumu will help Sakusa work through his misophobia at some point, either through helping him clean, or helping him relax, or just giving an ear for him to talk and he'll listen. Sick fix are also a common thing, either with Sakusa going ham, trying to get Atsumu healthy again if he's the one sick, or just noping out because germs. Or if Sakusa's the one sick, then Atsumu will be reassuring him, helping him feel human when all he feels is gross, contaminated, and dirty. Mamma Mia! I don't know why the fandom decided to make her a single mom a lot of the time, but regardless, she's almost always depicted as super warm, motherly, and will welcome Sakusa to the family with open arms. With Sakusa's family, it's kind of a flip of the coin if they're also chill, but maybe not as boisterous as the Mia's, or if they're just cold. One of my favorite bits in Saku Atsu fanon is when Osamu, Atsumu's twin brother, has to deal with Saku Atsu's horrible antics and is either heartily lamenting the relationship they have or him realizing and or begrudgingly respecting how he and his brother have become very separate people over the years and seeing Sakusa's positive influence on Atsumu's life. Sakuatsu is still going strong with more fix and fan content being created for it every day, from memes to domestic fan art to even more headcanons. And when the Black Jackals are all inevitably animated, there will be a second Sakuatsu explosion. It's imminent. Recently, there's been a good amount of joking between Sakuatsu shippers, some of which are like, no, we're not gonna see the Sakuatsu panels get animated in the two IQ movie cup. We're not gonna see Atsumu call Sakusa Omi Omi. And then other Sakuatsu shippers are like, Sakuatsu panels 
those Watsakawatsu panels, the panels where they're standing next to each other, the crumbs? Do you really think the crumbs are gonna make the movie cut, Patricia? Am I still sad about the Haikyuu movie news? No. Good God, I literally just spent hours talking about this ship that lives rent-free in my brain. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this silly crash course on the beloved rare para turned mainstream ship, Sakuatsu. Even though this video was a lot to work on in terms of writing, filming, and editing, I discovered that I really, really like making long-form content, just spilling about these ships that I'm weirdly passionate about. So if you'd like more of this in the future, then let me know. I'd love to do it. You can get more insight into my shipping brain and preferences in the process. <laughs> if you're a fellow Sakuatsu shipper, then feel free to say hi in the comments. If I manage to convert you, then let me know. And if you're not fond of the ship, then that's okay too. I hope you had fun learning about it. And if I ended up missing out on anything super crucial to the ship's draw or history, then let me know as well. Thank you again very much for watching, and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye! Thank you.